Listen, we used to have an offstage guy, but times are tough with COVID, so we're all paying the price here a little bit. We gotta, gotta announce myself. And hello, all you people on the live stream online. Please be nice in the comments. Don't let the size of my head fool you. I have an incredibly fragile ego. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll just get started then. I, uh, getting older, I'm turning 29 uh, this next week, and uh, I feel like your, the roles of parents start to change a little bit as you get older, because they're getting older too, right? Like, uh, for instance, my mom has this old nasty cat. It's got diabetes, it's on its last leg, literally. It's a diabetes joke. And, uh, and no, we're, we're walking, they're, they're, they have a little, you know, people give away kittens in front of Walmart and such, and so we're walking around and my mom's just like, oh, Seth, I should get a kitten, look at the kittens, they're so cute, I should get one. And I was like, Charlene, you have to finish your old cat before you start a new one. <laughs> Where are the parents at tonight? Round of applause. Where are the parents at? Yeah? Do you lie to your kids? Most of the time. There you go. I think, I think it's normal to lie to your kids a little bit. There's, there's innocuous lies, right? Christmas time rolls around. You start telling your kids stories about Santa Claus. Not a big deal. Uh, when I was growing up, my dad, when Christmas time would roll around, he'd start telling us we were Jewish. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was true. As long, I mean, he'd tell us that all the time. You know, thick Jewish lineage. You know, we were the first Jews to move to Utah, he'd say. And we just grew up thinking that. We just believed my dad. Because you believe your parents when they lie to you. And then the, uh, the, those DNA tests came out, and so we got to find out if he'd been telling the truth this whole time. We got to find out how Jewish we actually were. And uh, the results came back. 8%. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough to call yourself Jewish. That's not Jewish, that's Jew-esque, okay? It's Jew-adjacent, it's a juicent. <laughs> I'm, uh, and I took the test, and I, uh, the, my results came back, and the thing that stood out to me, it said I had more Neanderthal DNA than 80% of people who had taken the test. <laughs> I was just looking at those results over my furrowed brow and my underdeveloped temporal lobe, my overbite, and I just said, huh, I just don't see it. I uh, guess it's about time I should address the giraffe in the room. I am six foot nine. Yeah, I have to tell people that because otherwise they'll tell me how tall I am after the show and that's always annoying and stupid. She's like, you're so tall. It's like, I know. I own a ceiling fan. I know. Okay, I'm aware. You have to tell me I'm tall. That there's ways to find out I'm tall, right? You don't tell an ugly person they're ugly. Mirrors exist, you know? <laughs> Not that uh, mirrors work the same for someone like me, you know? Everyone else looks in the mirror and they see their lovely face in the morning. I just see torso, okay? <laughs> it's hard to have good self-esteem when you're getting ready for the day looking at Quasimodo hunched over at you, you know? <laughs> oh, man. I, uh... I, I have a lot of respect for gay people. I think that's tough, coming out of the closet to, to parents that aren't, uh, we got any, we got any LGBTQ people here tonight? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, usually there's, there's one, but uh, Provo, okay. No, I have nothing but respect. I have nothing but respect for, for those people. That's gotta be tough. The, the hardest thing I've ever gone through that was similar was I, I, I came out and told my parents I was a comedian. Uh, <laughs> There was a lot of tears. There was a lot of crying, especially because before that I was majoring in computer science. So uh, just came home one day from college like, Mom, Dad, I have some news. You should sit down. I think I'm funny. I think I want to be a comedian. My mom's like, well, Seth, how long have you known you were funny? It's like, well, Mom, I think I've always known deep down that I was funny. She's like, well, I mean, you were funny as a teenager, but we thought it was just a phase. Like, Seth, you're choosing to be funny. This is a choice. It's like, well, Mom, that's a little ignorant, okay, in this modern day and age. It's not a choice. You're either born funny or you're not. Everyone who thinks it's a choice, that's why open mic sucks. 
<laughs> well, Seth, I just feel like you're doing this for attention. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> And it was rough though, I was the black sheep of my family. That was not a good time in the Tippett's household. I was the black sheep of my family for a good couple weeks there. And then my brother came home from college and declared his major as ballet and uh, <laughs> took a little bit of the heat off of me. <laughs> Turns out it's better to be the black sheep than the black swan. That's the moral of that story. You know, I make people laugh and so does he, let's be honest. I, uh, <laughs> that's true, he's a six foot four ballerino. He is leotarded. I love junk food. Anyone else love junk food? Oh, I'm a sucker. My, my guilty pleasure is those crappy little hot dogs on the rollers. You know the ones at the gas station? They're just going around all day filled with cheese and sadness. You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, for instance, we, we take a handful of shredded cheese and just sprinkle that on a plate and then microwave it and eat it with a fork. And that was a cheese plate. We called it a cheese plate, okay? Not the most creative name in the world. Would you like a cheese plate for dinner? Yes, I would love a cheese plate for dinner, Mom, for the third time this week. And you guys can do the math. I mean, a family of giants eating mostly cheese, our toilets had an insurance policy. Okay, like it's... Not to go into too much detail. But I just, I grew up thinking that was normal. That was just something we ate, you know? And then I got married, and that was a really embarrassing conversation. Probably the worst way to find out what a charcuterie board is, you know? It's just like, you want a cheese plate? Yeah, I want a cheese plate. That's not a cheese plate. It's like, my wife was disgusted, and rightly so. Oh, man. I, uh, anyone? No, nah, I don't want to do that joke. Never mind. You guys didn't go with the other thing, so. That was a test. It was a test, and you failed. She was very offended that she failed the test. I, uh, <laughs> I'm getting sick of Facebook. Anyone else getting sick of Facebook? Yeah. I need new friends. Boy, uh, I, my friends, they just, they, they post depressing crap all the time, you know? And I've decided recently, it's my New Year's resolution to be more positive, so I've decided to start liking all those posts, because maybe they'll stop. You know, it's like, my cat died, like, it was my mom. <laughs> I'm alone on Valentine's Day, like, Share. <laughs> no, and I just, I, 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 people on Facebook really bug me, because there's, I, I, I have this friend who, he, he, he posts just incendiary stuff all the time, and I just have to comment back, right? Because he just, the kind of stuff is just, you can't let that dumb just exist in the wild, right? You have to calm it down, you gotta rein it in a little bit. And he posted the other day, he says, uh, statistically speaking, most people are idiots. Wake up, sheeple. You can't just leave a fart like that hanging out on the internet. So I, I commented back, I'm like, well, statistically speaking, most people are of average intelligence. That's how statistics work. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's how statistics works, but it sounded good. It sounded right. And this friend, he, uh, he commented back, he's like, well, I have a 155 IQ, so I can tell people they're idiots. And I was like, oh, really? Do you now? Can I ask where you had that test proctored? He's, well, Facebook. I'm like, you, you don't see a problem with that? You don't see a problem taking a Facebook IQ test? You don't think Zucker Boy's over here sitting on his pile of gold while you're just like, oh, I'm so smart, and you're just watching ads? Like, here's the thing. If you're dumb enough to click an ad on Facebook for an IQ test, the landing page should just say 90 tops. Like, that's it for you. Uh, this friend, he's, he's one of those cringy friends. He has a joint Facebook account with his wife, which is just, ugh. Really? Like, nothing says marital infidelity like a joint Facebook account, you know? Somebody screwed up. That's... And his wife's name is Shasta? Like, I know Utah's famous for weird names, but Shasta? Like, was she born and Sam's choice was taken? Like, what is... But I was proven right, this guy, he is an idiot because recently he came out as a flat earther, so that's been something I've had to deal with, being friends with a flat earther. And I'm just like, so I message him, I'm like, dude, what's it gonna take for you to believe the earth is round? You know, besides the thousands of years of math and science. And he's just like, well, I'd have to see it with my own two eyes. I'd have to see the earth is round with my own two eyes. I was like, okay, that's doable. We'll just go on a big flight, you know, take you up high enough and you can see the earth is round. And he was like, not gonna do it, Seth, because the glass in the airplanes is bent outwards, so it refracts the light and it looks like it's round. It's part of their agenda. Like, but whose agenda? Who's making money on the earth being flat, right? Like the cracker industry? <laughs> I mean the food, not the meat, just. 
this industry's going fine. I, uh, <laughs> and so I'm just like, well, so, so the plane's not going to do it, so you want to go into space because you think every picture of the Earth from space is photoshopped, so you got to see it with your own two eyes. He's like, well, yeah, i got to go into space, but like not inside a space shuttle. I was like, what do you, what do you, you mean you've got to go out into space, but like with a space suit? He's like, no, because then they'll just put LCD screens on the inside of my space suit. It's like, so you've got to go into space without a helmet so you can see the Earth is round with your own two eyes. He's like, yeah, that would do it. That would do it. And guys, I can't think of anything more poetic than a flat earther, taking a flat earther into space, having them see that the Earth is round with their own two eyes, having a single tear float off and crystallize into the void. <laughs> see the beautiful earth and everything you know their blood starts boiling which is common when conspiracy theorists are proven wrong and then and then like explosive decompression right like that's the best thing that could happen you a flat earther would see the earth was round and it literally blew his mind like that's the best <laughs> that's the end of my life that's that's it's not gonna get better from there you know uh, there's a lot of misinformation on Facebook, though. A lot of stuff, you know, flat earthers, anti-vaxxers, essential oils. Ugh. <laughs> All just a bunch of malarkey. I have back problems because I'm tall. You should rub some frankincense on your elbow. Shut up. That doesn't... <laughs> you just put some lavender in my butt and my cancer will go away. <laughs> no. Essential oils. I'm sure I pissed off half the crowd because of doTERRA, but whatever. <laughs> whatever, Provo. <laughs> And, you know, I don't want to get too political. I don't want to piss people off. So I'll just say something we can all agree with. Laughter is the best medicine, right? <laughs> Except for vaccines. I got to talk about it a little bit. I got to talk about it. I feel remiss if I didn't talk about it. Well, let's just let's break down the problem, right? What's the thing that all the anti-vaxxers say vaccines cause? Autism, right? Firstly, what's the big deal with a little bit of autism, okay? I'm a programmer for my day job. Very nice people. And secondly, it's autism spectrum, right? It's a spectrum. So at the end of the day, chances are we all have a touch of the tism, you know? Like you'd say in the old country, a touch of the tism to you, and then you'd avoid eye contact. <laughs> Thank you four people that clapped. Uh, I feel like I'm just on the wrong side of this whole crowd. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Oh man, and I, and I, it's, a, it's a problem though. There's a lot of anti-vaxxers out there, so we have to fix it. We have to fix it, and I have an idea. What we do, we just give everyone a placebo that prevents autism, right? You give them, the, oh, you can't get autism from vaccines because it never caused it in the first place. Just put some saline. Just give them a saline shot. You're like, hey, good, problem solved. Now everyone's happy. You say, Seth, you should put saline in there? That's dishonest. I call it a solution, okay? <laughs> You guys are gonna boo my chemistry jokes? Come on. <laughs> I am worried. I am worried telling these jokes in Provo. I'm worried I'm gonna go out in the parking lot after the show and some crazy Karen anti vaxxer is gonna come out of the shadows and just <laughs> shake me with a syringe full of measles. <laughs> and then I remember I don't have to worry because I'm vaccinated against measles. So. <laughs> Oh man, I went to the University of Utah, played basketball at the University of Utah. We got Utah fans down this far. We, get, we got you booing up front. I didn't ask if anyone didn't like the University of Utah. I know there are those people here. Like, I did play against Jimmer. I was on the basketball team and uh, he did score 47 points on us and it was pretty embarrassing. And then he didn't want to shake our hands after the game because he didn't want to catch our losing. <laughs> cocky little leprechaun. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but I, I went to the University of Utah, so I didn't, I'd never been down to BYU. I'd never been to Provo until I was, uh, until I was an adult, and I was, I was dating, and I, I went out on a date with this girl who was living in the BYU dorms. And I didn't know that the rules were strict down here. No one told me. And so I just showed up at the door. I knew it was going to be a bad date because she was five foot two. That was not, I didn't plan that well. That was, uh, you, you can't post a picture of a girl that's five foot two on Facebook without people saying, that's a fun daddy-daughter date. I'm out. Like, <laughs> not doing that. She was a real head turner though, like when I tried to kiss her. <laughs> but uh, no, so I, I show up at her door and I thought she was just going into her bedroom to grab her purse or something, right? And so I, I just follow her into her bedroom. I thought I was supposed to. And she got very angry very quickly. She's like, whoa, Seth, where do you think you're going? 
I was like, oh, I was just following you into that. I don't know, I was just following you. She, you almost crossed the chastity arch. <laughs> and me being a heathen, I had no idea what the chastity arch was. And so I was like, well, what's the chastity arch? And then she calmed down, because it was a teaching moment at that point for her. <laughs> she was like, well, Seth, we don't let anyone of the opposite gender through the chastity arch, and that way nothing bad ever happens. And I was like, oh. We can always go to the back seat of my Satan mobile. Like, that's an option. No one's had that loophole before at Provo? Like, uh, is it ironic to make out with a Mormon girl in the back of a white Kia Soul? Maybe, maybe. I feel some of you guys tensing up a little bit. It's okay. These are just jokes. Unclench your butts. It's fine. These are just jokes, okay? I would never fit in the backseat of a car. <laughs> ah, that's it for me, you guys. You're a wonderful crowd. Are you ready for your headliner? Oh, you can do better than that. Are you ready for your headliner? You've seen his dry bar comedy special, right? Raising Insanity. You can see his next one coming out sometime in the spring. Make some noise right now for the very funny Heath Harmison. Tippets, everybody. Very funny guy, yeah? Woo! That guy scared the crap out of me when I met him. He just came, snuck up right behind me and turned around. It's like, poof, right there, right in his belly button. It hit me right in the nose. It was, he needs to wash that thing. It's like he, and, and it's like if Sasquatch waxed his whole body. That guy. Very good looking, Sasquatch, that guy. He's very, you guys didn't know this? You guys didn't know I met him, that's fine. Anyways, oh, it's a great way to start, you guys. He's my Hodor, right, when everything goes down. Hodor. Okay, we have three heathens in here. Fantastic, yeah. If you know a Hodor is, you're a bad Mormon, all right? Just saying, it's Game of Thrones. A lot of things in that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of you just silently judge me. Cool. All right. That's okay. Oh, good times, guys. You guys, we're outside. And we're like, these are, yeah, these audience members are real. They're not holograms. They're real. Right? It's crazy, isn't it? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I have been with my wife and two kids since March 24-7. I'm just happy to be on the house, okay? So happy to be here. And the mannequins. We bought some mannequins. Just, you know. I needed to keep, keep, you know, keep the comedy going, so I just bought some mannequins, just put them in random parts throughout the house. Did shows. They didn't heckle. It was nice. They didn't laugh either. <laughs> it, was, it was good. The mannequins helped fill the void a little bit. Uh, no, I just was crazy. I look crazy. I'm doing comedy in front of mannequins. My kids are like, Dad's losing it. <laughs> I feel like The Shining. Uh, yeah, you know, again, if you guys know what The Shining is, bad Mormon. <laughs> you know what the premise of that is? Anyways, uh, father kills his whole family. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> No, I, uh, you know, it's weird. Uh, when the pandemic started, it's, it's, you know, things, uh, when things come crashing down, it's, you know, it's not fun. It's, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a party, uh, I'll tell you that. I was sitting there, it's fine. All the work goes away for the year. And you're just like, oh, all right, well, oh, I do. And then I just sit there, I'm just sitting there, and the next thing you know, my 12-year-old daughter's sitting on the couch with me. She's just looking at me. You need to do something. <laughs> what do you mean? Do something? Anything. Shower. Do something. You're sticking up the house. All right? We're all talking about it. I'm like, what do you mean we all? It's just you, your mom, your brother, and the mannequins. Who's talking? It's, like, you know, it's a problem, Dad. You need to do something with yourself. All right? You got to just like, be creative, okay? You're creative. You're a funny guy. You can do something. Just like, wait, get on TikTok. TikTok? What the heck is TikTok? She's, she's like, you know, they do dances and stuff. I'm like, sweetie, I don't dance. She's like, no, you can do funny videos or something. You're just, I don't know. So I get on the TikTok, right? I get on there. I go to check out. The first video I see is this. Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, it 
was my son's page. It was my son. Yeah, that kid can twerk. He's got a future. Okay, whatever pays the bills. He's <laughs> a good kid. I did get on the TikTok though, and uh, I was sitting there trying to figure out what what kind of video I should do. I was talking to my daughter, I'm like, what should we do? She's like, what do you mean we do? I was like, yeah, you can do it with me. I don't know how to do this. You just make Rice Krispie treats or something. She's like, Rice Krispie treats? What? I'm like, yeah, I'll make some Rice Krispie. She's like, okay. All right, so then I found this stupid hat that I bought, like, this big, like, keeps the sun out, like, big hat. Just put it on. I go, press record. This is what came out, right? Press record. Okay, hi, y'all. My name's Thomas Table. This is my daughter, Chestnut. We're going to make some rice Krispies today. Hope you guys ready. It's going to be a party. <laughs> I don't know either. I'm losing it. Okay, but I did that video, and apparently over 300,000 people thought that it was good enough to follow. <laughs> yeah, so I love TikTok. I love it. It's the only thing paying the bills, so it's good. So if you're on TikTok, man, get on there. And follow me. It'd be great. Oh, I am losing it. When I have to say that, I get to put it in my bio now. You know, that's not something you want in your bio. Be like, yeah, he's funny, he's done this and that. He's also on TikTok. It's great. Good times. Guys, it was a weird beginning of the pandemic. I had to homeschool my kids, you guys, for a short time before the online stuff started and all that. Homeschooling! If you are, okay, good for you. You're psychopaths. You are, you, I don't even know. I don't know what, how do you do it? I don't know how, I almost killed them. I'm just gonna say it. I almost did. I almost did. I don't have it in me to be a teacher, okay? And I, I mean, I'm, if you saw my grades in school, you already knew that, okay? But, I should think, so I was the math teacher, okay? I was the math teacher, uh, and I, well, I'll say this. Um, my kids, I got a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. They got a solid fifth grade education from me, okay? My son, you know, was doing the whole, I did successfully obliterate the whole common core idea out of their brains. Just put that right in. Yeah. Yeah. I am not learning math twice, okay? It was hard enough the first time, okay? We carry the two in my house. You just throw it right up there, bring it right down. It's that hard. It's not that hard. My son's giving me crap. He's like, damn, we need to group the numbers. I'm like, we're in a pandemic. We're not grouping nothing. Math does not get a free pass! Social distance your numbers! <laughs> Stupid. My, my wife taught everything else. I will say this, bullying went up way more when we started homeschooling. Was, <laughs> my wife beats me, that's what I'm saying. It was bad. Oh, no, we got through it okay. We got through it, yes. They're back in school now, which is nice. At the house to ourselves. Nothing happens. It's great. It's great. Round of applause if you've had children in here in your lifetime. Had the kids? Yeah, a couple of woos and these guys. Oh, they took everything from us. How many kids did you guys have? Four. Four? You live here? <laughs> All these other people are like, <laughs> they must be transplants. <laughs> Four. That's ridiculous. You don't go into double digits, you're a lazy person. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, like, hello! Fourteen! <laughs> yeah. yeah, I only have the two. I have the two kids, and uh, that's all I can handle. That's all I can handle, right? This, you guys, to me, you're smart. Okay, you're smart. Yeah, I mean, well, kind of. You're not as smart as I am. I only did it twice. There was a guy, I'm not kidding, I grew up in Idaho, okay? Mormons to the north, okay? We were <laughs> there, and this guy, he really wanted a boy. He really wanted, he, he was a dentist, obviously, and um, he, uh, he wanted a boy. He had 16 girls, you guys. Six, I know, this lady almost died just now, so. <laughs> yeah, 16 girls, get up! The guy's gonna die if he's not dead already. He's outnumbered, they will kill him. 16 girls, could you imagine? Anyone have 16 girls in here? Even close? 
okay, you're my people. <laughs> so like, don't tell them, don't tell them, don't tell them, don't tell them. Don't tell them. No, I, um, I really do like being a dad. I will say this about my kids, they are not tough. Uh, they are not tough. Your kids aren't tough either. Uh, I know some of you might be thinking, oh, my kids are tough. No, they're not little wieners, all right? They're not tough. But it's not their fault. They're getting rid of all the stuff that makes kids tough anymore. For example, on the playground, you know what they got rid of? The miracle ramp. You know what's right on the ramp? Yeah, I think it'll mess you up, huh? They got rid of that because of how we got on it, okay? Because you didn't get on that thing, one foot on, one foot off, you grab on that bar. Another little kid named Timmy, he's just straddling the inside bar, ready for the ride with hope and happiness in his eyes. Like, all right, Timmy, you ready? Here we go! <laughs> this is fun, isn't it, Timmy? No, that's not how you got on. How did you get on? <laughs> <laughs> You were flying? It was zero to 60 in 0.2 seconds. You were gone. Yeah, what's Timmy doing? He's racking himself on that inside bar, just screaming. <laughs> vomiting, <laughs> just a spray of vomit. It was awesome. Yeah, but you didn't get near that thing at full velocity. It was like, really going? It's like, it hurt. It's that one idiot kid that would try the he just latch on, and if you were too close, his feet would kick you in the head. Right before it slingshotted him across the playground. And he would skip across the pavement. Like a skipping rock. The pavement! Remember the pavement? Yeah, it was either pavement, gravel, or shards of wood. Big shards. And they, they would impale you. You got hurt on the playground when I was a kid, man. We played games just to hurt each other on the playground. Butts up, have you guys ever played butts up? Yeah, if you don't know what that is, all you need is you need a tennis ball or a racquetball, a ball that bounces, all right? That's a little hard, okay? You need a ball, a wall, and a bunch of your buddies. What do you do is you throw that ball against the wall. One of your buddies will then now try and go and catch that ball before it hits the ground. If they try and catch it, and miss it, they now have to run and touch the wall before one of the other buddies grabs the ball, throws it against the wall. Now if the ball hits the wall, before they touch it, you now have to stand on the wall like this. But all your buddies get a chance at short range just pegging you with the ball. It was awesome. I love that game. Now here's the thing, I was, uh, I was not husky, I was not chunky. I was a fat kid, okay? I was fat, I was big, okay? When I smiled, I could not see. You understand? I had the puffy cheeks, big puffy cheeks that was just, every time I smiled, could not see a thing. I was a big kid, right? So, I'm playing this game, I get ready, I go to touch, grab the ball as it comes out the wall, I'm like, yeah, my chubby fingers wouldn't let me do it. It came right out of the hand. I'm like, no! And I touch the wall, and as soon as I touch the wall, the ball goes, hits me right in the face. Blood everywhere! That was awesome. Anyone ever play Smear the uh, Person? <laughs> Where is play some Smear the Person? That's a terrible name for a game, by the way. All right? Terrible. Well, when you're in fourth grade, you don't know it's the name of the game, you know? If you don't know what Smear the Person is, basically you get a football, a bunch of your buddies, who's ever touching the football gets a Obliterated by the other 20 kids. Here's a little funny story about some other person. All right, I am in fourth grade. It's back to school shopping with mom before school started. We were rich, we went to Kmart. Right? Or the K, or March, depending on the side of town you're in. Uh, we were going, we get the three sets of clothes for the year. All right, three sets for the year, not the school year, for the year. Your pants became cut off jean shorts in the summer, all right? So I got my three sets of clothes. You doubled up on the underwears and the socks. Now, when I was a big kid, so with the underwears, I'd go with the boxer shorts. It's breezy, it's nice, all right? It's good. But then I saw this package of underwears. There's this guy on there with the underwears, and he had the, all the abs, just <laughs> like all of them. He had all the abs, so my brain's thinking, huh, that's what I've been doing wrong the whole time. But where are the wrong underwear? Right, so I convinced my mom in fourth grade to buy me men's silk bikini underwear. I, I don't know what she was thinking. She bought me, and they fit. They fit. Guys, they fit. Well, it was a little loose in some areas, but it fit everywhere else. Right? 
So I wear, I'm wearing the silk bikini underwear. It's first day of school. I'm feeling confident. It's bunching a little bit, but I'm fine. I'm doing all right. I go, go to school. First recess, what are we playing? Smear the person, right? So I'm feeling confident. So right away, I grab the ball and immediately, boom, and I hear the, my silk bikini underwears have now become silk thong underwears, okay? They are up inside me. And it hurt, but I'm tough. So I played through the pain, right? So I kept playing, but every play, every time it's just working its way up me. Just kept working and working and working. My butt just kept eating these underwears, right? So by the end of recess, I now know I have a problem, okay? So I go to the bathroom, I deal with the problem. Now the only visual I can think of for you guys, is have you ever seen a magic show where the ma magician's pulling that endless handkerchief out of his sleeve? So that one's like, I feel like it's never ready. I feel like I was trying to start myself. Just a run, 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 run. It was terrible. Then I had to go commando the rest of the day, guys. Commando for a fat kid, are you kidding me? I didn't have the thigh gap, okay, it's this, all day long, just two more recesses, just I had to end over sweat, blood, it was terrible. I couldn't walk, it was this the rest of the day. Gosh, dang it! This is where the person is a terrible game. We had a shake, guys. I'm still. It's that pandemic dad bod. It's killing me. Yeah, it's killing me. Take this shirt off, it's like a biscuits can. Just boom, everything's flying out. My wife likes it though, she likes it a bit. Played hide and go seek. Anyone ever play hide and go seek when they were a kid? Yeah, of course, yeah. Ever do it in a graveyard? Yeah. You did it! You did? Yeah! No. You don't do it. <laughs> don't. I don't know. Here's right? He's like, yeah, you don't do it. No. Here's the thing. Okay. So picture this. I'm playing in the dark. You know, I'm probably 12 at the time. 12. Just running at night to the graveyard. And all of a sudden, I'm not running anymore. I wake up in a hole. <laughs> A hole in a grave, six foot hole. I wake up, stars, dirt. What do you do? You scream. You scream at a decibel that I can only imagine is calling every dog in the neighborhood. Right? I'm sitting there looking. Help me! Help me! Seek in a graveyard. You're hiding, you're in your spot, and you hear this. Help! Help me! Help! What, what do you do? You run! You run home! You run home and you leave your friend Ethan in a hole for two hours! Because you don't want to tell your parents you're playing hide and go seek in a graveyard! Where's Ethan? I don't know. I don't know. I don't see. I think you made it home. I don't know. What are you, what are you guys doing? You're just playing hide and go seek. He was hiding really good. I think he made it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting in that hole. Guys, and I couldn't knock on my neighbor's door because they're dead! <laughs> so now the, cop, the cops get involved. <laughs> now the cops, they, you know, the, finally one kid rats out everybody, right? And they're like, well, he might still be there at the graveyard, hiding out of nowhere. And then the search. <laughs> And I'm just sitting there, the flashlight comes, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> My clothes were gone. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you can't play hide and go seek. You can't do it. There's a lot of things that have changed for kids, man. There's a lot of things have changed since I was a kid. We play hide and go seek in graveyards and stuff. I don't, I don't know what kids are doing. Or playing Rambo. Anyone ever play Rambo? You can almost get hit by a car or stuff like that. Shine those lights. I've, 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 I mean, I got nudged by a car too. But, you know, no, I was, but some good things have changed. You know, like the grandparents smoking in your face. Remember that back in the day? It didn't matter. They, they didn't know that this. That apparently that was bad for you. All right. The fact that they're like. <coughs> sitting there holding their grandkids, the baby, <laughs> the baby's like, <laughs> right? they didn't know, like, I didn't, 
right? I don't know if, if I'm the only one here, or I just have terrible grandparents. Right? Here's the thing. My, all my family smoked except for my parents and us. My sister had a big smoking problem, but she was four. Um, she, that nicotine really got to her. It started with the gum cigarettes, is what it did, and then she got into chewing with the big leg chew. Um, but, but no, my grandma, she loved us so much. She was the sweetest lady. She was Rose from the Golden Girls, okay? If you know Rose, Betty White. She was Betty White. She looked like her. She's a very sweet lady. Uh, but she had her chair, right? She had this little mini bar at her house. Uh, that everybody would gather around, and that's where everybody would visit, tell stories, all the stuff, but it was just a cloud of smoke, okay? And so when she would call the grandkids over, come sit on grandma's lap, and I was a big kid, I don't know how she, I mean, it was like, she had legs, she could squat like 500 pounds, I think, that lady. And I'm sitting there, just like, get up on her lap, you know? And uh, she's sitting there, she bounces me, right, with the cigarette. And this is, of course, she had, she had her phone right here. She had her dust buster, you know, the, the portable dust, the thing that you pulled off the wall. Like, you don't know, get all the ashes and out of my hair and stuff. Right? She's sitting there just like, oh, sweetie, I love you so much. Just bounce me, and I'm just like. <laughs> and no oxygen at all, right? I'm just being <laughs> You can't tell your grandma I want to get down, you know, because that's rude. Right? So you're just sitting there, and eventually you're just like. <laughs> Next thing you know, you wake up in your bed at home. I don't know. With a smoker's cough for the rest of your life. <laughs> you hear it? It's there. Um, good stuff. I had, to, uh, I had to stay with my brother-in-law recently, and they have a lot of kids. They got seven. My uh, my brother-in-law, he actually went to Tonga for work. You know Tonga, third world country. Uh, met his wife there. Then he got married, came home, and uh, <coughs> got had seven kids. So I have a bunch of uh, I have a seven. I have seven Tongan nieces and nephews. One of them scares the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, his name's Maka. Really? Maka. He's gonna be my bodyguard one day. He's bigger than his dad and he's four, okay? <laughs> he's huge. He's got he's got a thicker beard than me. Like he's grown it in. Right? He's buying other kids beer. You know what I mean? Like this kid doesn't mess around. <laughs> he's a big kid. And here's the thing, I was sleeping one night, I'm sleeping there, and uh, he sleepwalks. Right? This kid sleepwalks. And yeah, he comes in the room. And I'm sitting there, I'm so sick, I got my CPAP on, you know, it's like, you know, the CPAP machine with the hose, looks like a, looks like an elephant, you know what I mean, like, and I go, that's me, every night, right, he comes in, but then he scares the crowd, I'm thinking I'm going to scare him with the CPAP mask, right, but no, he comes in, he's sleepwalking, he starts doing a haka, guys, you know what a haka is? You know what a haka is? Kamote, 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 I'm like, whoa! It was more like this. Everything was, I almost blew out my hose, guys, with my scream. Like, the whole thing just almost shut this and scared the crap out of me. Oh my gosh, the kid. You don't wake him up either, because he'll bite you. And he did, right? Stitches, um, but he's a very <laughs> the kid is crazy. My uh, the CPAP thing's fairly new, uh, so my wife's still trying to get used to it. She, you know, sometimes you want to cuddle in the middle of the night, you know, cuddle. So I got the, you know, doing the thing, and then you know I'm kind of roll over and just like, and then she she tried to kiss kiss me. Right? She just forgot that I had, the, and I just she kissed it, and I hear this. Oh, ugh. Ew. I'm like, Ew, you want to try to suck on my hose? <laughs> so, anyway, it's really boosted our bedroom life. <laughs> I'm getting great sleep, though. Um, I, 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 listen, I need to take a drink, but I gotta, I wanna keep the energy flowing, because you guys are on fire. So, I wanna, I wanna take a drink, so every time I take a drink, you guys give me a huge round of applause like it said something awesome. Okay, let's test it out. Here we go. Thank you. That was very nice. Thank you. 
lot of bad things are happening though for kids now. A lot of things have changed since I played organized sports. I don't know if you guys have kids in sports or if you've had kids in organized sports. But sports for kids has changed since I played. I mean, I grew up in the 80s, not a terribly long time ago, but it's really changed. I mean, we did crazy stuff in the 80s, though. Yeah, we kept score. <laughs> Which is completely unheard of now, right? Because you don't want to hurt kids' feelings if they lose, right? Because everyone's a winner, right, guys? That's your life, isn't it? No, I've been to Walmart. <laughs> We're not all winners out there, guys. <laughs> and if you're not laughing at that or offended, you've got some problems. Because <laughs> you can shop at Walmart and be a normal person. I'm talking about Walmart people, okay? Again, if you don't know who I'm talking about, it's you. So you've got, you've got some life stuff to deal with. But... All I'm saying is we need to teach our kids what it feels like to lose so they know what it feels like to win and work for it. That's all I'm saying. you got to let them get out. Yeah. I'm done with the participation trophies, okay? Trophies! We really got trophies when we won in the 80s. We got the ribbon. Right? First place was blue. Second place was red. Third place, I don't know. No one gave a crap about third place. We were competitive. We didn't want third place. Yeah, she gets it. <laughs> or she's in denial. She's like, we have so many third place friends. <laughs> My kids are third place people. That's all I have. I'm not going to get on a whole pedestal about that issue. We got bigger problems with kids' sports. The treats. Remember the treat parent at the end of the game? Oh, in the 80s, we got awesome treats. We got like Mountain Dew or Surge. Remember Surge? <laughs> yeah, or Joel Cola. Remember Joel? Five times the caffeine. That's someone jack you up, man! Pure caffeine sugar is great. It was illegal here in Utah. Uh, it was awesome, man. It was, and you got some sort of cupcake with it. Nothing healthy. You had to do another activity after you ate the treat just so you wouldn't get diabetes. You had to burn it off immediately. Yeah, but you can't get away with treats like that now, can you? Because no. something in the last few years called gluten came out and ruined everything. Gluten issues? Are you kidding? We didn't have gluten issues in the 80s. We just dealt with the diarrhea. Yeah. You've got a tummy ache or scrape on your knee. Your dad and your grandpa like, rub some dirt in it. Eat the dirt. Remember the dirt mentality? Yeah, dirt apparently fixed everything in the 80s. You could be sitting there with a broken leg just dangling there. Your dad and your grandpa would like, rub some dirt in it and walk it off. Walk it off! Round of applause if you're ever told to walk it off. Yeah. We got bigger problems though. Bigger problems with kids' sports. The worst thing is dealing with the other parents. Okay? Yeah. Most of the parents are pretty cool. Except for that one. Her name's Meredith. Okay? Yeah. And she's the worst. Yeah. Did I change her name for this joke? No, I did not. Or no. She is the worst. Okay? And Meredith and her best friend Karen. You've heard of Karen. Everybody's heard of Karen. All right? Karen is not the problem, okay? She's being, her strings are being pulled by Meredith. You get this, right? Okay, Karen calls for the manager. What we do, okay? Meredith goes straight to corporate. She's cutting off people's heads, guys. This lady's terrible, all right? This is the lady that brings water and celery for a treat, you guys, okay? Water's not a treat! Celery sucks! I can't even put peanut butter on it because the nut allergy kid on the team. Peanut allergy? What a, that didn't exist in the 80s either. It wasn't a thing. Was it? I get, I get it. It's very serious. It's, it's a problem, yeah. My son, he has the peanut allergies. <laughs> Not the funny part, but that's okay. No, it's fine. We give him a peanut every once in a while just to let him know who's boss. <laughs> yeah, listen to your mom and take out the trash and I'll give you the EpiPen. Move it. You don't have a lot of time. <laughs> felt it and I heard it, I know that there's a Meredith in here whose butt cheeks went <laughs> <laughs> That is a joke. I don't want Child Protective Services knocking on my door when I get home. But the point is, Meredith's the worst. Right? I'm going to be the hero because I'm the treat parent after Meredith. All right? I didn't go crazy. I got Gatorade. I got the red and blue kind because they're the best. 
Yellow sucks. It's when you're a kid, it might be pee, you don't know. <laughs> right? The yellow was the backup gator in the 80s. You guys didn't even make it to the cooler to get cold. Stayed warm in the sun to get warm like pee, all right? <laughs> so if you're the last kid stuck with the yellow gator, you're like, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not drinking that. <laughs> Find me a red or blue and I'll drink that. I'm not drinking that. So you do it. So I got the red and blue kind. Then I got cupcakes. I don't give a crap. That's right, I got the Hostess cupcakes with a little swirly on top, creamy filling it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, best kind of cupcake! Hero! <laughs> Go to the game, we win. I kept score in my own head, because that's what we do as parents. We keep score because we care. <laughs> Except for I'm the parent that voices that we won. I made a winter flag out of our bed sheets at home, my wife's still mad. I grabbed that thing, I'm like, wow, we won! <laughs> Like, Meredith is like, we don't keep score here. He's like, shut up, Meredith! Wow! Like, I'm excited. The kids are excited. Like, where's the tree parent? I'm like, guys, I'm over here! And they come over, they get their Gatorade, they get their cupcakes, their Jack's Bond sugar. Run. They carry me on their shoulders, all right? <laughs> Ten-year-olds. It was beautiful. It was like reverse Rudy. It was awesome. <laughs> Chant my name, Mr. Harrison! Mr. Harrison! Beautiful and crying. <laughs> and that witch Meredith ruined everything. She comes up to us, she's like, <laughs> Heath, I'm sorry, Mr. Harmison. Apparently, you didn't get the memo, okay? We have gluten issues on this team, mister! All right, my son Timmy has a peanut allergy. He eats a peanut and he will die. I'm like, well, Meredith, your son scored a goal for the other team. I've been doing this team a favor! <laughs> your wife here or what? Oh, apparently both men in the family have a nut allergy. <laughs> it had to be said, you guys. <laughs> Listen, Meredith is real. A lot of people ask me, is Meredith real? Yes, she is real. She is out there, so lock your doors. <laughs> And don't go to any PTA meetings. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. I'm pretty passionate about the anti-Meredith movement. Uh, now, here's the thing. Meredith represents the crazy people. Okay? You can be a man or a woman. Anybody can be a Meredith. I've been a Meredith to somebody. Okay, you have definitely for sure been a Meredith from some, for somebody. It doesn't matter. You can try to be as perfect as you want. You're not going to do it. So... It gets, uh, so we're, we're starting this whole thing where we're going to talk about all the crazy people on the planet and uh, the extremes and whatnot. So I wanted to start the movement by getting some swag for people to wear. Just to send the message. It's very simple. It's just, it's all the matters. Now, I know you're thinking, why is your face on there, Heath? Because I want them to know it's coming from me. I'm not afraid. He's got some hashtags on the back. Don't be a Meredith. Celery sucks. Cupcake parent. Keep score. Shut up, Karen. We don't want to leave her out. I'm on my website, so you can check that out. My wife and I also have a podcast. Uh, if you like podcasts, called the Shut Up Meredith Podcast. Uh, we do. We're in our second season. Uh, we have, we've had a, a lot of different kinds of guests uh, where we talk about the extreme people that they dealt with in their lives. We've had entertainers from Vegas, we've had police officers, paramedics, uh, military people. We've had all sorts of people from all walks of life. So it's a very fun podcast, me and my wife. My wife is very funny as well. Very funny improv comedian. Um, and uh, also, uh, I figured, you know, we gotta wear masks these days. And it's not going away anytime soon, I don't think. But uh, if you wanted to, you could get a mask. And we'll just send the message without having to say anything at all. <laughs> now, some of you are like, hey, I'm on a date night, and I want a mask, but I don't want to wear the same mask. Well, we're going to tell Karen to shut up, too. So we got Karen's. <laughs> shut up, Karen's. Okay, imagine how many people you could shut up in line at a grocery store or a game. Guys, this is, this is for a good cause. I also have a DVD I'll be selling. Uh, my son is on there. My son does stand-up comedy. He's been doing stand-up since he was six years old. Um, very funny kid. We filmed that one actually at Wise Guys Comedy Club uh, in Ogden. Uh, so he, uh, he's, he, he would do dry bar, but he's too dirty. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, you, you laugh, but it's true. Uh, he's, 
So when he was little, it was all cute. You know, you know, he had the cute factor. Now he's a teenager, and that's what he talks about. And he's going through puberty, so he talks about it. Yeah, he got the pamphlet from his doctor. He reads the pamphlet on stage and tells everybody what he's going through. So, yeah, it's not dry bar worthy. So, uh, it's okay. So you can check it out. He's got some, those clips are on my YouTube page. Uh, the stuff on here is the, the cutesy fun stuff. Okay, so in case you don't haven't had the puberty talk, <laughs> it's safe. So, <laughs> right? He gets it. Um, <laughs> so, man, you guys have been fun. You guys have been fun. I've, I've really enjoyed this. I, you know what, guys? I love this job. I love, and, and, and seriously, any entertainers out there would say this. This right here, this means everything to us. The fact that you're willing to come out and watch a live show, you're helping us get our lives back. Okay, so a lot of lives have been taken away from this whole thing. And I'm telling you right now, this is, this is a beautiful sight to me. And I'm so happy that you guys were able to come out and laugh and enjoy yourselves tonight. And we're socially distanced, we're having fun, we're enjoying each other. You guys are gonna go back home, only one or two of you will get COVID, it'll be fine. <laughs> It's so crazy, right? But I, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for coming out because the mannequins are not doing the job anymore. <laughs> They're just not. <laughs> this is crazy. But, uh, no, I do, I, I do love this job. And, you know, I, I've, I've, a lot of people ask me like how I became a stand-up comedian. And uh, for me, it was seventh grade. Right? Seventh grade, I was, like, again, I was a chunky big kid, right? I was starting to lose a little weight coming into seventh grade. Um, but I had done sports, I had done all that. Um, but I, I decided I want to do something different, so I decided I'm going to go into drama. I'm going to be an actor. Be a thespian. It's a fancy word for actor, right? So I go into this acting, uh, this drama class, and my teacher that year, she's like, okay, we have three options for plays this year. Frumpled Fairy Tales, Knights of the Rat Table, and The Emperor's New Clothes. Now there was a stipulation for The Emperor's New Clothes. One of our classmates would have to go out in front of about 300 people in nothing but their underwear and socks. Now this would never fly these days, okay? You could not send a junior high kid out in their underwear in front of a crowd. It's called prison time for a teacher, right? But back then we got away with it. That's the that's one we chose because one embarrassed one of our classmates. But guess who gets the role of the emperor? Me, the fat kid, right? So I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm gonna own this. So I go out, it's opening night, sold out theater. I'm on the wing of the stage, nobody can see me yet. I got my tidy whities on, I got my socks, and a robe covering me. Now, I go to step onto the stage. We had a wood stage, and they just buffed it out to get it ready for the show. That night. Yeah. So, <laughs> I had to improvise, okay? Because, yeah, this guy's like, whoop! You know, yeah, I'm in my underwear with socks on a slippery floor in front of an audience. Okay, this is a problem, okay? So, I had to improvise, so what I did is I took off the socks, I bought the socks, I hear the line I'm supposed to go out to, have nowhere to put the socks. <laughs> Except for one, that's right. I stuffed them. I stuffed them, you guys, and I went out there, center stage, <laughs> screams and laughter throughout the whole auditorium. My grandma was there, she nearly died that night. You know, now, <laughs> in hindsight, I, uh, I probably should have put the socks in the front. Just, just a nugget, you guys, hanging on the back of my tidy whities. <laughs> when I turned sideways, you guys, the eruption of laughter that came over that crowd was so big. I was not embarrassed. I wasn't embarrassed. I felt that energy. I was like, oh my god. It took, it, it felt like forever for them to stop. I couldn't say my next line because it was so loud, right? So I'm sitting there in my underwear. Any movement that I did made them laugh any harder, right? So, my drama teacher failed me, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, I felt that energy. And, and, and from that moment, I had the opportunity to travel over 22 different countries. I performed for our troops overseas, which is hands down the best thing I've ever done with my career. I love our military, and I love what they do for us over there because they give us the freedom to be here. So, 
Yes, if you served in any capacity, if you're in the military, police officer, firefighter, paramedic, teacher, you're all on the front lines in my eyes, and I want to thank you for your service in, in all aspects, so thank you. Um, <sighs> so I've come a long way since the underwears. I had a lot of problem in my underwear, guys. <laughs> so bikinis, I know, you know, when I went with the tidy whities that was a bad choice, too. Bad choice. But, I don't know. I, I had a lot of fun over the course of my life and had experiences, falling in holes. And, and you gotta get out there. You gotta do stuff. You know what I mean? But you never know. These are the stories that we talk Sitting on your couch all day, binge watching Tiger King is not gonna get you stories. <laughs> right? It doesn't. Which, that's a crazy story. <laughs> that is crazy. Oh, here's the other thing. I was actually performing on a cruise ship and I did this. S is question about, you know, pets and like how people, and this one lady, you know, because there's people that treat their pets like their kids. Is, you guys, is anyone treat their pet like their kid in here? Over, oh, they're pointing her out? Or is that you? What do you have? I've got a pit bull boxer. Pit bull boxer. Awesome. Matches your guy's beard. <laughs> that, I look at that beard, I'm like, yeah, that guy's got a pit bull boxer. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's not his at all. Oh, he's got a wiener dog? <laughs> That's fine. No, they're, they're cool dogs. I, I, there was one I saw that had like really short legs. I don't know what kind it was, but it scared the crap out of me because it looked like a little, little person one. Yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah, we did that, and then I peed. Um, <laughs> but this, okay, so you got to, this lady had this cat. I hate cats, by the way. If you like cats. Good for you. Yeah. If you ever go on a date with somebody or look for somebody and you want to know they're a cat person, you'll find out. Okay? You sit there. So, what do you like to do? Well, I like yoga. Well, this lady was very excited about her cat, so I asked her, okay, I never asked what kind of cat, but this time I made an exception. What kind of cat do you have? She's like, it's Siberian! <laughs> Guys, she had a tiger. <laughs> she had a tiger. She looked like Carol Baskin, by the way, as well. I was like, and I never saw her husband after that cruise either. Right? <laughs> so, you... <laughs> Dude, you realize this lady's on a cruise for a week, right? She left her tiger at home for a week, so when she came back, She's dead. <laughs> she went on a ship, ate a buffet for a week, and then she went home that tiger's like, all right, you're ready now. <laughs> you don't want to live a tiger. You guys, that's just <sighs> Like I said, I love this job. I've had some other cool jobs in the past. Uh, one of my favorite jobs, I was a whitewater rafting guide. Has anyone ever been whitewater rafting before? <laughs> it was a great job. I was 18 years old, took people down the river for a few years. Uh, one of the trips that sticks out to me the most, my boss came up to me one day, he's like, okay, we have a different trip today. Uh, we're going to be taking down the deaf and blind kids. I'm like, <coughs> excuse me? He's like, well, they're not deaf and blind. We've got some deaf kids and we got some blind kids. I'm like, that doesn't make it any better, man. This is an extreme sport. That seems dangerous. He's like, we do it every year. It's fine. Now I'm a little panicked. These kids' lives are in my hands, right? So, uh, it's actually pretty cool. The kids get there, and before we put the raft in the water, the blind kids would go around the raft and feel it to get familiar with it. One of the blind kids got on top of the raft, started running across it. He's just like, poof, poof, poof. I'm like, oh my gosh, this kid's awesome, right? So now I'm jacked, I'm ready to go, all right? So I get my group of kids, we get the raft in the water. Now we also had a deaf interpreter lady, okay? She is signing to the deaf kids to give them the commands when I needed them to paddle through the rapids and stuff like that. She's in the front of the boat, okay? So we go through the first set of rapids. It's 100% a true story, I promise. <laughs> so we go through the first set. Go through the first set of rapids. And it's kind of intense, not too crazy. But uh, the kids are having a great time. The second set of rapids, now, I know is a little bit more intense. Right? So I'm like, I'm going to give these kids a ride. Right? So we go through. And guys, I hit this hole. Perfect. I just hit it. Like, boom! Right? And the water's just <laughs> crushing over. Kids are having a great time. Well, I lost the deaf interpreter lady out of the boat. She is gone. She's out. She is in the water. Okay? 
the deaf kids are freaking out. Okay. The blind kids have no idea what's happening. Just... My guys, you gotta stop paddling! I gotta save the lady! And now uh, here's the thing, this lady's been great. She's been doing her job all day. Uh, she hasn't been talking, she's been signing to the kids, making sure they're doing what they're supposed to. All right, now, the problem with that is now she's panicking. All right, so she forgets that she can speak to me. So she's signing to me from the water. I don't do sign language. I have no idea what she's saying. So I just see her, she's just like <laughs> Which apparently means, help me, okay? I don't know this, but I just see her face. She's panicking, I'm like, all right, I need you to calm down. I need you to talk to me, okay? Talk, tell me your name. What's your name? She's like, it's Meredith. I'm like, I'll see you down river. <laughs> stand-up comedy. Be sure to check out the website, drybarcomedy.com. A lot of great deals, a lot of good shows coming up. Uh, Heath's going to be selling some of his merchandise over here, so grab your uh, your Shut Up Karen and Shut Up Meredith masks, respectively. Uh, drive safe, everyone, and one more time for Heath Harmison! Yeah.